a stretch and a hydrant already. KSG, thank you very much for the health check. Hello, everyone. My name is Steph. I'm Bonus Cool. Today, I'm here with the Ace Attorney expert herself. Hey, it's me. Kitty! Can I dab on the haters? There we go. I'm, I'm too old to do it that fast, but yeah. <laughs> Hydrate and the stretch. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Let me share my screen with you, Katie, so you see what's actually happening here. Yeah, that could be good. That could be good. All right, guys. Oh, my pleasure. Let's get on right on to it. First thing I come to is a dab. I hate this. Well, you're going to hate the rest of this. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> let's get a deal with Zin Eoff today. So this is the final part of the trial. Uh, let me see. Watch stream. Uh, I believe so. Okay. Also, let me know if my voice sounds weird because I was listening to the other one. I'm like, man, my voice doesn't sound so good, but. I think your voice sounds fine, but the amount of times I say that and the amount of times you go, Steph, it doesn't sound <laughs> fine. It's like a circle on a Venn diagram. Just be my, uh, my audio equipment, too, is not fancy or nothing, so. Well, and you're on back King Child Gaming. All right, let's go with this. So we're finally going to see the tiger on the stand. We've almost got this case one now, Nick. I wish I could agree. Huh? When I cross-examined Mr. Armstrong just now, he said he was just doing what the tiger told him to do. But Godot picked up on it, remember? He pointed out that without proof, we don't know if what he testified is the truth. You mean you think Mr. Armstrong was lying? I don't know, but if that's the line the prosecution takes, we could be in trouble. I get the feeling that if we don't have the case-making evidence we're going to need... Hey, pal! Breath of gumshoe. Why are you so jumpy, back, detective? Your hair's standing on end. Hey! That's the pot calling the kettle black, Miss... Miss Topknot. Anyways, what about my weenies? You haven't told me about how good my weenies are yet. Did you guys eat my weenies or did Maggie eat my weenies? <laughs> a thousand, yeah, there's a hundred copies of it, yep. It's not a top dot. Never mind about the hair, just calm down, all right? I, I, I can't stand still when I don't have a job to do. I, 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 I kind of got wound up. Is this my trial for nuking Turkey? Yes. Ah! No kidding. You gotta, you gotta have something you need me to do, pal. Anything. Well, um... Hey, I'm gonna take a jog back down to the precinct. I could get some prints analyzed for you if you got an hour. An hour? The trial will have, will have reconvened by then. You can find some piece of evidence, right? True, without some kind of trump card to pull out of the bag, we're really stuck. You think you get some fingerprints at Alan Alice's done in an hour? You bet! In that case, would you mind checking the prints on this for me? My attorney's badge, no, um... You're gonna be back in the stage anyways, could you find out whose prints are on this? Oh, hey, that's the small bottle I gave you back this morning, right? Yeah, I think it's time we solve the mystery of whose prints it on on it belong to. Why did you not, when you had it, tell me what prints was? <laughs> Say again. Why did they not just like, oh yeah, we tested the compound that was in it. Fingerprints? Nah, we don't need that information. <laughs> <laughs> For one simple reason, Katie. Suspense. Drama. Having to pull out the case longer than it needs to go out for the TV show. Bureaucracy. <laughs> Red tape. <laughs> <laughs> sure thing, pal. Actually, it's been gnawing at me, too. Okay, I'll get this off the lab right away. Just make sure you don't lose the case before I get back. No promises. Oh, that's pretty much the final showdown, I guess. It's time to separate the phonies from the real guys! Fe uh, Maya, the phonies from the phoenix was right there and you didn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good opportunity to take it, goddamn. 
court will now reconvene Mr. Godot as you find this Furio Tigre. I even tamed him for you. It was a three cup job. No problem. Summon the whooper, you get the whooper. Whoop. And give him the good boy badge. There we go. Tamed him? This guy's this guy's name may be Ferio Tigre, but come on. He's pretty lively. Be careful, he still bites. Very well. Please show Mr. Tigre to the stand. Ah, uh, witness, please state your name and occupation for the Don't have it on the table, Maya, unless there's room for me down there, too! Only the badge, only the badge. I, uh... Oh, what'd you want? What'd you say to me? No, 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 nothing! I didn't say nothing, honest! Who would've guessed that fear would be inducing a bad... Oh my god! Who would've guessed that the fear would induce a bad Brooklyn accent from the judge? I got business to take care of, you hear me? So who the hell got me into this hole? Was it you, Spikey? Ugh. No, of course not. It was the j He's fucking gone. Uh, judge. He's fucking gone. The, the judge ain't even <laughs> fucking there. Hey, hey, we got to see the pattern on the back of the seat. Pretty, pretty snazzy. Th there's probably some lore implications there. Let's take the next hour and a half and just investigate that, shall we? So, I mean, I don't know. It's probably like, if anything, it would be like actual Japanese symbolism, which I don't know. <laughs> symbolism beyond what the bat, what the prosecutor's badge and attorney's badge are supposed to resemble. Oh shit! They resemble some. Oh, is it the blue and the uh, red on here? No, just... it's um. So the attorney's badge is supposed to represent a sunflower, oh. and um, the prosecutor's badge is a chrysanthemum. That's cool, I didn't know that. All right. On to the next bit. At least according to what it is here. I'm pretty sure it's what it actually is in Japan too, but to be honest, I haven't looked it up. <laughs> but I'm gotcha. pretty sure. <laughs> Your Honor? Oh dear, I uh, seem to have dropped my pen. Where on earth is it? Don't mind me, just carry on the proceedings as normal. <sighs> so we're doomed. Maybe you didn't heal me! I said, who the hell was that called me in here? There's no need to shout. We can all hear you. What did you say? <laughs> There's no point struggling. You're caught in the snare. The relentless snare of the law. And I'm the one that hauled you in. <laughs> too cool. I will admit he got cut. Listen, I'm not a big fan of Godot, but I do have to admit, you get this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get this one, Godot. This is the you one. Get this one. Godot, like, listen, buddy. We, we, we haven't seen eye to eye recently, but you know what? <laughs> I, I got you on this I'll one. I'll give you this one. Yeah. Don't let him get the better of you, Nick. Let's start with the basics. You know about the incident in question, correct? Incident? I don't know nothing about no stinking incident, mask boy. You mean you didn't attend the previous trial of Maggie Bird? Maggie who? I've got more important things to do than watch damn courtroom dramas. Of course, of course. Well, perhaps you could give us your testimony then. Please tell us about what you did on the day of the murder. <clears> hmm. <throat> Phoenix right. Oh, what, what voice did I just give there? Uh, he suddenly became like, he suddenly like took the judge's spirit and began channeling the judge, yeah. I think. You are the one who set this up, didn't you? You was going to regret the day you ruffled the tiger's fur. You hear what I'm saying? Maybe I should have brought a diaper with me today. Get a grip, Nick! You're not even out from under the table yet! 
It's cozy down here. <laughs> I don't know nothing about no murder. I was tied up on business in December last year. Spent all my time in the office. I got whales lined up to borrow cash from Tender Lender every single day. You just want to check my uh, my Ask Violetta. Look at me ripping my shirt up. Ah, at last I found my pen. Very well then, Mr. Wright. Your cross examination, please. Ah! Well, what is this? Please, wait a second. You're afraid from shouting out like that. I know the kinds of games that guys in that blue place. That lowlife ain't no lawyer. He just budges away at stupid details till he wins. Lowlife, me? Listen up, Samadhi. Every time you use ask something that don't relate to this case, I'm going to bill you $50,000. You're going to borrow the cash from me. Oh, that's one loan contract I refuse to sign. I don't think it ain't going to hurt when you're tangled with a tiger. I love a good spectator sport. Just a minute. That's really not. This witness is. How can I put it? A hungry tiger roaming the urban jungle. Get on his bad side, and he'll bite everyone's head off. Yours too. Very well. I have no choice but to impose a penalty system here. You better be listening. I said I got business to take care of. Big business. If I don't split now, I ain't gonna catch my bus. The court will now impose a penalty for any irrelevant pressing of the witness testimony. Holy shit. Keep that in mind as you begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, your honor. Look at that, Nick. Come out from under there already, would you, Maya? I dropped my pen. So I can't just press him. Fuck. I'm gonna press him on this one. Cause I think what I could do, I could prove he wasn't in the office. I could prove he had a meeting with Glenn Elg on December 3rd. So I can prove he was not in the office then, I think. I'm gonna press him there. Are you sure about that? We're talking about one month ago, you know. You see these teeth? That's how sharp my secretary is. Sharp? Is he talking about Viola Cadaverini? She writes everything in my scheduler. December, mainly in the office. That's what it says. So that's who I was. That seems like a rather, uh, sketchy schedule. <sighs> there he goes again. <laughs> what, did the tiger, what the tiger did all the summer isn't the issue. What's important is what he was doing on the day of the murder. So what now? The day of the murder was what again? The third, right? Was the autopsy report. It doesn't tell me the day of the murder. What? I'm gonna press harder. Mr. Tigre, what you are? Uh, if you wouldn't mind going into a bit more detail. This is a dead end trite and you know it. Remember the rules. No, it's essential that we establish the witness's alibi accurately. I, I agree. The victim was killed on December 3rd. Were you in the office that day too? Maybe you ain't listening. Of course I was. I never set foot outside. I had meetings all day with a bunch of cats who wanted to do business with me. I ain't even heard of that young kid before. I do believe that witness's last statement was important. Um, Mr. Godot, if you could please. Mr. T. Gray, the court asks you to add your last statement to your testimony. Hmm. Don't let an animal beat you. Be a man, your honor, and ask him yourself. All right, I don't want to press him too much because I feel like that's going to screw me over. So let's save that. We're going to present Glenn Oak's calendar. Objection. Mr. Tigre, 
You claim you didn't know Mr. Glen Elg, but it appears that Mr. Elg knew you. What? What'd you say to me? Mr. Elg left this note on his calendar. Meet with the tiger. And the date? December 3rd. De December 3rd? That's the day of the murder. I swear this game has an insane amount of lying under oath. Yeah, right? So, Mr. Tigray, I submit that you did indeed know one Mr. Glen Elg, because on the very day of the incident, you met with him. <laughs> not bad, you actually not bad. Sorry. I was just messing with you. See how good you were. Did you hear that, Nick? He said you're not bad. That's one compliment I could do without. Plus, he's lying through his teeth. Uh, witness, please remember that you're under oath. Lies will not be tolerated. Oh, you scum! <laughs> <laughs> Lies will not be tolerated. You're different from every other perjurer we've had in this courtroom, apparently. <laughs> you calling me a liar? Is that what you're doing? Ro oh. <laughs> 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 like Zoic Scoob, let's get out of here, man! Again, uh, this is why it's like. But this is when, you, like, obviously, like, this is not a faithful translation, but this is why dubs are very important to me. <laughs> <laughs> this dub specifically. <laughs> no, yeah, 100%. The cultural, like, implications of, like, of everyone making their own dub and stuff like that is fucking amazing. It's so good. I love it. So you're saying that your claim to have never seen that kid before is the truth. I said I'm dead serious. You should better believe that truth. Huh. Then I'd say that gives me time to enjoy another cup of pure black magic. That is, while you testify for the court again, Mr. T. Gray. Oh, yes. Uh, would you mind indulging the court, witness? He never actually met the victim. There's got to be a lie right there. It's time I nailed this guy. The worst part is every time I read Yusa, it's just like, Yusa think I'm a liar? Yusa calling me a liar? <laughs> I mean, is he saying Yusa or is he saying like use? He's saying use, but I'm reading it as Yusa in my brain, right? So I'm just like, it's fucking, this dude's fucking uh, Jar Jar Binks. It's the worst thing. It's the goddamn worst. I ain't no liar. I never met Glen Elg. There was some lame guy of that name, though. Wanted to borrow cash from me. I set up a meeting with a guy at my office, Tender Lender. Waited around for him, but he never showed up. I never even been to Tres Bien joint. You see ya? I see. That all seems perfectly logical. You had arranged to meet the victim, but he didn't show up. I've heard it's pretty hard to keep appointments when you're dead. Verily, begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Didn't I tell you I got a big deal going down today? I ain't gonna make my bus now. I'm gonna have to take the express train. That bill's going straight to you. Right. <sighs> I know, I know exactly where to get him, though. Nice. I'm going to present his own profile on this one and call him a liar. That's the contradiction right there. No. <laughs> I'm going to present my attorney's bet. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to present this matchbox, which we found a tender lender from Trey Bien. I, I would honestly go through all these options to see what would happen and what memes we'd find in there. But I don't want to lose my penalty points yet because I feel like I will soon enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, fair enough. It, like, sometimes some of the fail dialogues are very funny. Sometimes yeah. it's just tedious. It's hard to know which it's going to be. Yeah, exactly. Mr. T. Gray, is there something you'd like to tell the court about these matches? 
Matches? What you talking about? We found them in your office at Tender Lunder. They're from that restaurant. What? If you've really never been to Trey Bien before. What was a book of the restaurant's matches doing at your desk? You've been stooping around my stuff too, huh, wise guy? What are you, my ball and chain? Ain't no broad controlling me. <laughs> you just can't finish a broad. <laughs> order, order. Well, witness, I think it's time you started telling us the truth, don't you? Ah! Sorry, sorry, I'm terribly sorry. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. <laughs> I like that really subtle pause for like a millisecond with that little uh, hyphen there. To 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 be like, this is technically PG. <laughs> I didn't notice it slow down, but I will say that there's a couple of things in here where like they do do some fun little uh jokey jo <laughs> jokes based on how they break up uh dialogue <laughs> yeah no like, it was for a millisecond it might have honestly just been the hyphen coming out but like i was just like okay that's kind of funny i know <laughs> pussycat i don't go back on what i said but okay i was at the joint that day what but listen good all right i might have been there but i still never met that kid well well looks like an order just came in for another testimony i'm this close to proving it was him he did meet glenn elk that day and he did put poison in the coffee he must have I was supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant that afternoon. When I opened the door to join, I saw one ugly scene. The guy was laid out over the table, stiff as concrete. I figured if the place wasn't hot already, it was going to be. So I split. I heard the cop siren on my way out. I went straight back to my office. Fuck, that's tight. I see. You didn't actually meet with him in the end, then. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Hold it! If I wait around here any longer, I ain't even going to make the normal express. No more stupid questions. I yeah, fuck you. Ha. No problem. Anytime Tri presses you on something irrelevant, I'll see he pays a penalty. Mr. Goodell, that's my job. Your job is to slam that little hammer of yours and call a guilty verdict. So do it. Y yes, sir. <laughs> no shit. Judge, please. Come on, judge. Keep control of your like your courtroom for a second, guy. Just for a second. Come on, man. Grow a spine. Oh, the poor judge. He's truly the tragic hero in all this. Poor judge. Yeah, right, FNO? The Special Express ain't cheap, right? So use those since you paying. Oh, man. Doesn't the rule of law mean anything around here? Nah. I was about to say that. Yeah, nah, fam. I was supposed to be at the kid at the restaurant in the afternoon. When I opened the door to the ugly scene, the guy was laid out over this table stiff as concrete. I figured the place was going to be hot. Going to be, so I split. Fuck. This one's actually rough. I don't know where to press him on this one. Or where to, um... Because here's the thing, when the cop sirens happened, that was two hours later after we died, right? Because he died at 1.30, at 3.30 they put on the show for the old man. Jeez, he would have passed the old man.
I am going to actually press him on this cop sirens one. I think that'll be a good choice. Did you save before pressing? I did, yeah. You went straight back. Did a bell of gill suddenly hit you for what you did? What are you trying to say? <laughs> you trying to tell me you ain't been guilty of nothing? Uh, we all have our crosses to bear. We all have to swallow the dark secrets we hide. Like this! The courtroom's not exactly the place to talk about dark secrets, is it? I see you've done it again, Mr. Wright. Another relevant line of questioning. I must impose a penalty accordingly. How about a penalty for those two jokers and the garbage they keep coming up with? Oh, Rick, what do you think? He's running out of ways to avoid the truth. I need to press him fast before he has time to think things through. I want to come right back out with a contradiction. Be careful when you press him. Oh, yeah. Be careful when you press him on, though, or you'll get penalized, okay? So I do need to actually press him on something. That much we did learn. But, like, the question is what do I press him on? And... I think we'll press him on this, then. You mean you saw Glenn Elg's dead body? I guess I did! But I only saw him from behind! What the fuck was that voice? I want to take a look at something real quick, but hold on. He couldn't have seen the body. It was impossible for him to see the body. Because there's a fucking wall between Glendale's body and the entrance to the restaurant. God, I'm such a good lawyer, Katie. You're such a good lawyer. I definitely uh, didn't how, get a penalty is, a second ago. <laughs> how is um, our good boy uh, Ace Detective Whooper? Or Ace Attorney Whooper? <laughs> He, he's also a very good lawyer. He's better than me. I, I, honestly, he's like my sensei, right? He's whispering in my ear all the time telling me how to, like, actually do my job. Only saw from behind. He was wearing some raggedy bit of cloth he called a hat. And what time was this? I don't know. <clears throat> huh? You know what winds me up more than anything else in the world? Watches. <laughs> round watch. <coughs> round watches. I ain't gonna pollute my palms with some dick and henpecker. Out of interest, Mr. Tigray, what winds you up second most? Huh? What do you think? Square watches! This guy for free, huh? Look, all I need to know was something bad was going down that place. Alright, let's, let's actually present the, um... Plans. Yeah. You're something of a loan collecting pro, aren't you, Mr. Tigray? No one escapes the tiger's clutches. Well, I'm something of a lie detecting pro. Angry face. And no one escapes the phoenix's clutches. Uh, got Fuck! Him. That was cool. What's probably even cooler um, is I'm just guessing here, but um, so the reason he was called uh, Phoenix Wright um, actually is to mirror um, Japanese, uh, where he was. I think it was a uh, Ryuichi uh, Naruhodo, mm -hmm. and Naruhodo, um, if you pronounce. Or like you pronounce it a certain way, sound or it's basically like the word like oh I understand or oh I see, so that's where all the the right right um uh... comes come from. But uh, uh, Ryuichi um has the kanji for dragon in it. Mm. Um, so like there's a lot of instead of um him being a phoenix, there'll be a lot of like dragon sort of things, which is why they sort of translate it into a phoenix. I, if I remember correctly, there's something about the phoenix and the tiger. There's something about the dragon and the tiger. In yeah, on, on Furio Tigre's shirt, you can see uh, a dragon and... I think it's a dragon and a tiger fighting. Yeah. Or 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 if it's not on it, 
I need to see a shirt again, actually. But basically, yeah. like mythology-wise, dragons and tigers were supposed to kind of be enemies so of each other. So this makes sense. Yeah. So it could st- it could still be no one escapes the dragon's clutches, which I don't know if that's the Japanese line, but it could be, which makes it badass in two languages. <laughs> I'm just saying, this is the one time Phoenix did a really cool act here. The one time. The one, the one time he did something super fucking cool. Oh. Usually he's just talking to parents. <laughs> I've got you now, Polly. Polly. I think it's time we got something straight. What's this trait? A new line of irrelevant questioning. These are the floor plans of the crime scene. When you say you were standing at the entrance, Mr. T. Gray, from there, your field of vision would have covered an area something like this. Indeed, the witness would have had a clear view of the victim's seat. Isn't that what I just said? I saw the back of the kid's head. Unfortunately for you, that is not possible. If the court would think back, you'll remember that between each of the tables is a tall partition. Why, that's true! Now look at the plants again. The truth is painfully obvious. From the entrance, the field of vision of any customer walking in ends here. So, from the entrance of Tresbien, you couldn't have seen the victim see. But you did see the victim that day because you met with him! Wrong. Have you forgotten the old man's testimony yesterday? The victim was alone at his table. But the defense just proved the point to be moot. The victim witnessed by Mr. Kudo was not Glenelg, but a fake. Hi, Chazza. What? In order to have Mr. Kudo falsely testify, the real killer posed as the victim he had just killed and acted out a charade. That will do. This trial has gone on long enough without the obvious question being answered. Who exactly was the real killer who impersonated the victim? You say the killer murdered Glen Elk and then impersonated his victim in a performance for Victor Kudo. In that case, Mr. Wright, reveal the identity of the court of the criminal to the court. It's good to no. It's my attorney's match. But who else would it be? Obviously, the killer is Furio Tigre. No one else could have done it. Yeah, the dragon is below the tiger here. You see the dragon kind of right on over there, Katie. Yeah. How you doing, Chazza? It's been a while since we've seen you here. How you doing? What? Well, witness. <laughs> now that's cute. You think you can pin this on the tiger? Maybe you don't understand. The tiger's king of the jungle. So I dare you say it again. Come on, you got the guts. You, you, you can't threaten me, Mr. Tigre. It's the defense. Go ahead and tell them. Tell the witness, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright! <laughs> Sounds to me like you must. It must be you, old man. You's got guts. I'll give you that. M Mr. Wright, don't leave me to handle this alone. Huh? Perhaps I can end this embarrassment. M Mr. Godot! Let's just go back over Mr. Kudo's testimony one more time. The old man didn't see just the victim. Oh, no, 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 no. That's every girl brought out of a Java Chino. She put something in it. There's no point in question about it. She's very conspicuously uh, put some white powder in there. Was the victim he saw the real victim or not? That doesn't matter. The fact remains he saw the accused put poison into the coffee. Yes, it was the waitress who poisoned it. Very impressive, Mr. Godot. Waiting for my <laughs> absence to launch your attack. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> it was, you fool. 
<laughs> I've fallen for my trap, Godot. <laughs> You've activated my trap card, Godot. Oh fuck. Ha. Huh. Found your pen at last, right? It was in my pocket. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway. Mr. Kudo witnessed two people that day. He saw the victim, the supposed Mr. Glenelg, and the waitress from behind. Yes, your point, Mr. Wright. I think the conclusion is obvious. If this Glenelg was really the killer in disguise, then surely it's possible the waitress was also part of the show. What? You mean the waitress was an imposter as well? The defendant, Miss Bird, fell unconscious immediately after the event. And someone used her fainting to hatch an elaborate plan to pin the murder on her. Who on earth was it? Who was the waitress that Mr. Kudo witnessed? Uh, profiles. Sorry, Cadaverini, rest in peace. Who is this woman? Her name is Viola Cadaverini. She's an employee at Tender Lender. You was making a big mistake. Do you know who Violetta's grandfather is? You better be going home in an armored truck tonight, if you know what I mean. Stop shaking, Nick. <laughs> Where was I? Yes, the defendant, Miss Bird, uh, stated the following. Well, when I took... Oh. Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table... It's true there was another customer in the restaurant. Um, she was sort of creepy. And she had kind of a cackling laugh. There's just too many contradictions in this case. <clears throat> the second man at the victim's table, who nobody but Miss Bird seems to have seen, the earpiece worn by the victim in his left ear when that eardrum was ruptured. And the radio show he was supposed to listen to a half an hour after it was over. There's only one logical explanation that clears up all of these contradictions. The whole incident took place twice. Once for real and once for show. If Mr. Furio Tiger, the only person who committed the crime, is you. Witness, what did he have to say? That's cute. Sorry? You sound right. I can do with a guy like you around. What, what, what do you mean? Okay, I'm in on this game. I'm going to charter a jet to get me to my meeting now, but I'm going to give you one more thing to think about before I go. Something to think about. You just got it all wrapped up nice, huh, right? But you just missed out on one real important thing. But that can't be. I was in that joint all. I was in the joint that day, and I met the kid too. But I could have poisoned him. You see her? What? Do you really expect us to believe you now, Mr. Tigre? Judge, I've seen you believe worse, yes. Um <laughs> huh. What a troublemaker. Troublemaker. Looks like we're going to need another one for the road. One more steaming cup of hot testimony. Indeed. Witness, will you explain yourself to the court? I'll give you one more chance to testify. What happened to the, that day at Tresban between yourself and the victim? I feel like he's gonna bite his tongue that's gonna really hurt. You know what I'm saying? And like, cause like I bit my tongue recently and I got a canker sore where I bit that tongue. So like, it makes my Ooh, speaking weird. Ow. Yeah, exactly. Like this guy probably has canker sores all over like his tongue cause of how much he probably bites it. Like I kind of pity him. Maybe that's why he can't speak properly. Like all the canker sores. Are you saying through? that all Brooklyn accents exist because they all bought, bit their tongues at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? It's the first person with a Brooklyn accent bit their tongue, and as such, they couldn't speak right, right? And then everyone just 
Everyone just You're gonna be destroyed by the people of Brooklyn. <laughs> Come at me, Brooklyn. Get in my chat right now and tell me off. And give me those free follows, please. And thank you. Um <laughs> <laughs> Uh. Yeah, I loaned, I loaned out cash about a hundred thousand dollars. Ah, my tongue! God damn it! Hold on, one second. Let me put some medication on my tongue. Oh, I feel fine now. Thank you. Oh, if it wasn't for that canker sore under my tongue. His complexion <laughs> just turns completely normal. He's no longer orange. <laughs> no longer orange. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think it's for a salmon, a blood orange. A scar over his eye disappears at the same time. He gets a beautiful monocle on one eye, and the chain his becomes- eye, His eyebrows become normal. <laughs> his hair becomes reputable and not spiky. Oh, wait. <laughs> that day, we were due to have a little chat. The kid- the kid had hit it his payback date, see? So anyway, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. I'm about to fly on this guy when he starts screaming. Yes, I won half a million bucks. He got lucky, you know, real lucky. That waitress hadn't done what she'd done, everything would have been over. Now, I see that the principal amount you loaned Mr. L was $50,000. Yeah, well, you has got the VIG to take up the account. Interest builds fast, you know. That's faster than fast. $100,000 is twice his principal. God, was that a student loan repayment? <laughs> 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 and the repayment deadline was December 3rd, the day of the incident in question. Yeah, he was one lucky kid. He got half a million dollars just in time. So I ain't have no reason to kill the kid. If I ain't got no motive, you ain't got no case. His motive, hmm? Yes, I have one, but what is it? Hmm, child payback days. So anyway, he said he's the way to pay up. I'm about to flatten the guy, start screaming. Yes, I'm not really lucky at least. I mean, we're going all over. Let's save this real quick. So, one million dollar bill for cranial surgery payment was due last year. He's a million in debt. Half a million would get him quite a bit out of that. Plus the one, um, plus the half a million from what's his face? Trey Bien, Eugene, yeah. The waitress, you mean... The girl with the glasses in the defendant's chair, who else would I mean? If she hadn't gotten in the way, things would have been bada bing bada boom, over and done with. That was wild. That was a weird voice I gave him. What do you mean things would have been over and done with? I used all their what? I'm talking about the cash. I was there to get my hundred gram. I was there to get my hundred G's back, baby. No, that didn't find out why I've read everything wrong. I was there to get my hundred thousand bucks back. All that, I'm a businessman. That's all, I'm a businessman. It was all coming together before the waitress got in the way. Hmm, as far as I can tell from the witness' testimony, I'm recuperating his loan. Mr. T. Gray has no motive for killing the victim. Witness, you will amend your testimony to reflect what you just said. Fantastic. Okay, great, man. That's what I needed. I was after the 100,000. I didn't have no other reason to kill the guy. Except. Except. My attorney's badge. No. <laughs> I do need to find out where I'm presenting this fake attorney's badge, though. I am so excited for it. Like, I am so excited to present that. So you just intended to get a hundred thousand dollars Mr. L owed you, correct? <clears throat> I loaned the guy the cash, and that's my right. Unfortunately for Mr. Elg, 
$100,000 wasn't enough to cover it, was it? Huh. About six months ago, you were involved in a traffic accident, weren't you? One second. Okay. I'll be back. All right. We'll give Katie a second. See, see what's happening. See what's happening, you know what I'm saying? Alrighty, I'm back. Welcome back. An accident involving a car and a scooter in which a young woman was injured. She was taken to the hospital where she underwent surgery. Where did you get all this info? These medical paper documents... These medical papers document the treatment of the young woman in question. According to these, her operation cost a million dollars. Payment for these expenses was due December of last year and was paid in full. One million dollars! A preposterous sum! Someone should have sued those HMOs! Ah. No one would pay a bill like that. If the medical association got wind of it, the hospital would end up dead as a morgue. But Mr. Tigray had no choice but to pay. Hey, Fireball. Hope you're doing well. Because his very life depended on it. Gah! Did they actually put like a tiger roar in the background? I think it might be the same tiger from the Big Top Circus. Yeah, I don't know. that's what it sounded like. I'm sorry you don't feel well, Fireball. Hopefully you feel better soon. Order, order, order! You say his life depended on it, Mr. Wright. Indeed it did. Simply because the injured woman was none other than Viola Cadaverini. Did you say Cadaverini? Bruto Cadaverini, mob boss in charge of all the underworld activities in the city, and doting grandfather to his precious Violetta, also known as Viola Cav Cadaverini. Ooh! Your life was in danger unless you paid compensation to the boss, correct? It makes sense. You were desperate to acquire $1 million Cav Cadaverini demanded of you. So desperate, in fact, that you decided to sacrifice Glennell's life to pay your debt. <coughs> order, order, order! What do you say to that witness? <sighs> it's a nice fairy tale, trite. But even if the witness did need a million dollars, <coughs> that doesn't tie him to Mr. Elg's murder. Mr. Elg owed him owed him $100,000 and had no way of hope repaying it. Yeah, this guy wasn't worth my spit. I don't think so. In fact, the opposite is true. The opposite. Lending money with no hope of ever seeing repayment would normally be bad for business. But, in this case, the very fact that Glenel had no way to repay the money is crucial. What? Now where are you going with this, Nick? No, just play along, Maya. You gotta think outside the box, Maya. Outside the box. It's very straightforward. Mr. Tigre wasn't a f wasn't after the one hundred thousand dollars at all. It seems you have a logical conclusion from this theory, Mr. Wright. Would you care to share it with us? Fuck. What exactly was Mr. Tigre after? Fuck. You know what it is. Oh Glenn. shit, right. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I forgot about it. I forgot about his his mixtape. That bomb ass mixtape, baby. Where the fuck is the mixtape? Oh, there it is. Glenn Nell was a programmer. A highly skilled programmer. That skill was the collateral Mr. Elf put up in order to borrow the money. Care to explain how skill can be used as collateral to secure a loan trite. He had the skill to create a computer virus, and so he did. A virus known as MC Bomber. A computer virus? What does one of those do? A computer virus is a, is a program that wreaks havoc on the insides of the computer. A computer? What does one of those do? 
I guess the beard isn't the only part of his honor that's, that is from the Stone Age. I'll explain to you later, Your Honor. Right now, this is the important point. A vir- A fanfic where Phoenix Wright explains what a computer is to the judge. Where is that fanfic? I want to read it. That's a- that'd be a good fanfic. You no, know, we can always write it. Chat, you know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> write a fanfic of Phoenix fucking talking to the judge about computers. A virus like MC Bomber would be worth several million dollars on the black market. Mr. Tigray, you couldn't have cared less about the $100,000, isn't that right? All you cared about was one thing, the virus. <sighs> on the day of the murder, Mr. Tigray's sole intention was to get his hands on this CD. Glen Elk had no way of paying back the $100,000 and Mr. Tigray knew it. But then a miracle happened. The kind that Mr. Tigray would prefer to say never happened. But he can't and neither can I. The lottery winner. Exactly. At the 11th hour, Mr. Elk won half a million dollars on the lottery, which left Mr. Tigray with no way of getting his hands on the all-important CD. At least, no legitimate way. <clears throat> so he resorted to illegitimate means. It's crazy. He murdered Glen Elg and then made his next move to frame Maggie Bird for the crime. Mr. T. Gray poses Glen Elg while Viola Cadaverini played the role of Miss Bird. And then they reenact the whole thing in order to establish a witness. The witness being the one we heard testify yesterday, Mr. Victor Kudo. Like I said, Trite, that's crazy. No one could pull off a stunt like that. For starters, there's no way the chef would have been kept in the dark about it. But Mr. Armstrong was in on it from the very beginning. Have you forgotten already, Mr. Godot? The uh, Mr. Armstrong owed the witness money too. Half a million dollars, in fact. He had no choice but to go along with Mr. Tigray's plan. Order! Silence or I'll clear the court! <laughs> you split on a good show, Spikey. If you want to stay alive in the loan shark business, you gotta be careful. You sing, I dressed up like a kid, created a witness, and framed someone. If I did something crazy like that, I'd leave a trail as bright as my shirt. I ain't dumb enough to do something sloppy like that. I agree. You, you, you do. Despite your appearance, you are very careful. That's why you took one more precaution. One more trick to make sure Miss Bird had no way out. What? Another one, Mr. Wright! Interesting. Why don't you fill us all in? Trite. What was the trick you say Mr. Tigray performed to frame the accused? <clears throat> the wings. <laughs> I've been so excited to present this, oh my god. What on earth is that? What an insult to think anyone could be fooled by such a childish imitation. <laughs> Consider yourself insulted, your honor. Mr. T. Gray, you didn't just pose the victim on the day in question. A month ago, in this very court, you posed as me. <clears throat> what? That's, that's the truth. But the witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. Although, now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? Hell yeah, Judge coming in for the clutch, finally. His memory is not failing. <laughs> finally! Judge is having a rare moment of lucidity. The first... on, hang in there, Judge. <laughs> for five more minutes, Judge. Five more minutes. We got this, bud. No, 
No doubt it was you standing in here, this very court, a mere month ago. The Phoenix Wright who put up the most disreputable, shabby defense I have ever seen. <sighs> Gah! Can you prove that, Gramps? Prove the attorney who represented the accused here a month ago was this man. Are you prepared to take the stand and testify that it was him? <laughs> hmm. Hey! Forget about it, yeah? What the fuck? Did his spikes go down like a fucking cat trying to beg for shit? A little did bit, it, yeah. Did his spikes I that he drew? Listen, I love, I love the sprite work. It's so good. It is. It's really funny. It's really fucking funny. You can just... The sprite work's always so good because, you know, again, like, they say about, like, sometimes, like, hardware restrictions really do, like, lead to cool innovations. Yeah. Like... Obviously, they didn't have a lot of space to work with, so they had to make every sprite count. Yeah. So, every sprite is just, like, so filled with just personality and just, like, symbolism and connections to other characters. Like, it's so good. <laughs> it really is. He, he went from looking like a loan shark to, like, a really bummed out, lame uncle. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> like, one of those uncles who's, like, really washed up and plays the guitar, he can play mediocrely well, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what he kind of looks like now. It sounds like you have a very specific experience. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't do something like that, not me. You, you, you made a mistake, right? It had I'm a good boy. <laughs> I'm a good boy. I'm a good boy. I like scratches behind the ears and playing guitar on a, on a lonely Saturday. You know, someone else, huh? I would never push your cup over the counter. <laughs> <laughs> Have you no pride, sir? This isn't a <laughs> secret kettle kicking my head. Good luck, Fireball. This isn't a matter of pride. In case you didn't know, Trite, here in court, we deal with people's lives. I mean, yeah. That's what I'm bringing up, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Godot is right. Your Honor? Thinking of myself, I am absolutely convinced. The attorney in question was the witness standing before me. However, I preside over this court as the judge with the vested power to hand down a verdict. <clears throat> Someone in my position cannot be swayed by a memory without evidence to support it. No! Hit dunk I guess. If the defense has no further evidence, the court will now excuse the witness. The circumstances surrounding Mr. Tigre's are Mr. Tigre are dubious for sure, but not conclusive. The judge lost his lucidity again! We're all dead. <laughs> we literally have his we literally have his uniform he came in here with. Uh, we come so far. But In the end, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> you say he impersonated Glenn Oak, you say he impersonated you, but none of that adds up to a murder charge. Can you don't- please get him arrested for something though, please? <laughs> you don't have a shred of evidence that the witnesses poisoned the victim's coffee. You don't have a shred of evidence that Megan Bird did anything. Ha! Sucks to be you, right? Don't mess with the tiger, or you're gonna get mauled. You just got that! All we managed to do here was chase him around a bit. But I was so close to getting him to admit his own guilt. Ha! Uh. Looks like I won't be needing a refill. If I just had one more piece of evidence, save real quick. Cause I'm not sure if that evidence is going to come in the, in, in the form of Gumshoe barging down the door or not. But I have one more piece of evidence. One more piece of evidence and maybe I can get Maggie off the hook. This one is cross-examination is over. You are free to go, Mr. T-Grade. Hold it! Yana, sir! Wait! Detective! Detective Gumshoe! Here to save the frickin' day! 
Sorry it took so long, pal. I, I, I stick everything on this. My badge, the works. So here it is. My heart's counting on this too. What is it, Tempo? Is it obvious, pal? It's the final, decisive piece of evidence. What? What? Sorry it took so long, pal, but I finally got the results from the lab. The results? About the prints, pal, from this medicine bottle. Oh, so do you know who the prints belong to now? You think I'm some kind of hacking detective? Of course I know! So tell us! They're the tigers, right? I knew it! They're not the tigers, are they? Fuck. <laughs> you, you bet! Clear as crystal all over the bottle. The Furio Tigre's paw prints, all right. That's great! We've got him now, Nick! What's wrong with you? You've hardly said a word since Detective Gumshoe got here. Throwing everything on the line for this, Nick! I know. Look, I'm sorry. This is kind of hard to say, but... It really doesn't make a difference whose prints are on that bottle now. Huh? What? what? Why not? What we need to produce at the stage of this trial is irrefutable evidence that the tiger put poison in Glen Oak's coffee. He's already admitted that he met the victim. The fact that his prints are on the bottle... That really doesn't make a difference now. Ah, I knew it! Great, no matter how hard I try, I'm never of any use. Hey, don't be so hard on yourself. You may be useless, but we love you anyways. <laughs> this was our last chance to help Maggie. And I've been working on some useless piece of evidence the whole time. It's alright, I'm a real loser. It's not breaking news to me, pal. I'm gonna take a guess. Um, I'm gonna take a guess. No, it can't be Edgeworth. I want it to be Edgeworth, but it can't be Edgeworth. No. Um. Why don't we just take that one? <laughs> I was thinking, but then I realized it's the line, so that's what it is now. There you go. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. <laughs> Maggie. You've been working on something for me. Sorry I let you down, Maggie. I know you didn't do it. And I'm a detective. We're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. I'm really sorry. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get out of your hair now. Detective Gumshoe, wait. He's gone. Is there anything we can do now, Nick? I wish there was. Gumshoe worked so hard to get the evidence. If only there was some way I could use it. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I grant you a recess so you can prepare this decisive evidence you've discovered. Ah, uh, yes. Don't keep us all in suspense, Trite. Show us. Naturally, we can assume it's evidence that will actually stand up in court, can't we? Thank you, Phoenix. Don't let Gumshoe's hard work go to waste. How much more of my time are you just going to waste? I ain't been to no court before, but you lawyers sure know how to blow things out of proportion. No doubt, in the nature of this evidence, it will speak for itself. Nevertheless, you will talk us through it, Mr. Wright. Well, I know I can't prove anything new with this evidence. I'm really back into the corner, but maybe if he thinks he's got me beat, he'll let his guard down a bit. Don't keep us waiting any longer, Mr. Wright. Present the final decisive piece of evidence to the court. I present this, huh? This is the defense's final piece of evidence. Isn't that the victims? Your Honor, Naturally, the court is already aware of the contents of this bottle. However, interesting new information has come to light. We have clearly identified some fingerprints on it. Fingerprints belonging to you, Mr. Tigray. What? But Mr. Wright, 
What conclusion are you hoping to draw from this new information? Everyone here knows what this bottle contains, except one man, one person in the courtroom should theoretically be in the dark. My prints are on that pansy looking bottle. Is that what you sing? Well, what the hell's in it anyway? A phony trial, phony lawyer, and phony clues. Everything about this case has been phony. Sounds like the perfect excuse for some phony- Oh my god, what? Mr. Tigre, this is a decisive piece of evidence that will prove your guilt. Why? Because it contains... Fuck! I do kind of want to see what uh, it says about the aromatherapy oil, though. I do want to see what that happens, but, you know. Um, <laughs> it's one or the other. I, I don't want to present it as false evidence. You know? Uh, let's try it. The bottle contains potassium cyanide. Potas potassium cyanide. The poison used to murder Mr. Elg, your honor. The victim's killer used this very bottle. And on this bottle, Mr. Tigray, we found your fingerprints. Well, how do you explain that? Ha! You'd make a good clown, you know that. What? You ain't never gonna get this to stick. You's just making me laugh now. You think a cheap bluff like that's gonna fool like that's gonna fool the tiger? A bluff? I can see straight through you, Phoenix. Right? That ain't a bottle of cyanide in it. No, no, this is the bottle we found traces of poison in. <laughs> Don't mess with the tiger, or you're gonna get ripped to shreds. The cyanide bottle was brown and it was made of glass. That cheap piece of trash. Don't look nothing like it. <laughs> Got him. At last. What? Why's everyone gotten quiet? I said that bottle. Is this the bottle you're referring to? Yeah, that's it! That's the bottle of cyanide was in! But you ain't gonna find my prints on that bottle. Don't let that cozy looking suit fool you people. That lawyer's just playing games. Tell him, Mr. Prosecutor. Tell him that guy where to tell that guy where to go. You still haven't figured it out. Don't you realize what you just said? What I said? What did I just say? You were summoned to this court for the first time earlier today. If you really had nothing to do with the murder, you shouldn't have known that the little you shouldn't have known all the little details. For instance, you shouldn't have known what kind of bottle the potassium cyanide was in. <sighs> but just now you slipped up in front of every single person in this courtroom. You described the exact bottle used by the killer to hold the poison. <clears throat> You just don't know who you messing with. I'm the tiger. I control millions of dollars on the black market. You think I'm gonna let some jump up suit get the better of me? Sure. Last piece of evidence was phony. But that's just what you deserve. A phony trial for a phony lawyer. It was all played out by you, the biggest phony of all. Whoa, shit, what the fuck? Wait, the power really just... What's going on? It looks like a black... It looks like a blackout. <laughs> really it's, well. it's really funny, actually. Well done, trite. 
<laughs> uh, did he throw? Did he throw the cup of coffee at him? Save my last cup of coffee for you. Savor it. While you watch the police restrain your prey. Oh god, I hit my freaking knee on the table. God damn it. Fuck. <laughs> You're laughing too hard that you hit your knee. Fuck, oh, it hurts. <laughs> god damn it. Oh my. Fuck. Ow. Oh my. Oh. <laughs> Ow, fuck. Like the funny bone, but for your knee, fuck. Oh. Ow. <laughs> Mr. Wright, you caught a tiger by yourself. But if this one hollers, he won't be let go. Now then, how are things going with Mr. T. Gray, Mr. Godot? He's being arrested on the suspicion of the murder of Mr. Glenn L. Fortunately for us, we managed to rectify a very grave error. Miss Bird was found guilty in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. Yes, she was. And in the absence of genuine evidence. But the tiger made one mistake. Indeed. He very nearly got away with everything if it wasn't for that one slip of the tongue. Furio Tigre is truly a frightening criminal. Ha! Huh. The truly frightening one. Is that defense attorney over there? What is your problem, Godot? Godot. Well, I am now in a position to deliver my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird, not guilty. Hey. That is all. The court is adjourned. Oh, fuck, Wendy. <laughs> Just gotta rub it well enough, I guess. Mr. Wright, I... 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 I'm at a loss for words. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Maggie! I was so mad when Mr. Wright landed me in all that trouble a month ago. And now I feel like I can forgive him. It wasn't me! <laughs> hey, that wasn't me, Maggie. That was the tiger. Look, Nick. In the doorway. That's a gumshoe. Oh, uh, guess I'll be heading off then. See you later, pal. Wait, wait, wait. Detective Gumshoe. Ah, uh, oh, yeah. Congratulations, Maggie. Thanks. I knew you were innocent all along. Why didn't you say that in your testimony then? Huh? Oh! Well, that was... Well, I guess I'll see you later. Oh, he just fucking yeeted. Wait up, detective. He, he just ran off. Maggie, why are you being so hard on him? He busted his butt for you. Thanks to him that we got the medication bottle. That wasn't even of any use. But... It's only because Mr. Wright used it so cleverly. Detective Gumshoe was just running around in circles. Poor guy. Look, looks like she still isn't ready to forgive him. Can't you put in a good word for him, Nick? Yeah, Maya's right. I should help Gumshoe out. It's clear he needs it. Maggie, you know Detective Gumshoe's been really worried about you through all this. I want to believe that, sir. On that first day of the trial, he practically gave the judge a free pass to lock me up. He didn't have any choice, Maggie. He's a detective. He has to report the facts. He doubted me, that's why. He thought I might have done it. I gotta prove to her that Gumshoe really cares about her. I know. I'll give her a little present to celebrate her freedom. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Oh, fuck me. <laughs>
This one really tickles you, huh? I hate that we're just gonna give her gumshoes weenies. I just hate it so much. Here you are, a present to celebrate your freedom. A pet. A present from Detective Gumshoe. He made it with a ton of love. He said he lost weight and he was worried about you. D Detective Gumshoe. I... I actually really like weenies, you know. Maya! You guys hear that? I'm pretty hungry myself, you know. Yeah, the trial dragged on for a bit today, didn't it? Um, is it okay if I eat this now? <laughs> oh, she's crying. Oh, how is it, Maggie? It's, it's really good. She's got rice on her cheek. So the case of the phony versus genuine comes to an end. The false allegations surrounding Maggie have all been cleared up. And who knows, maybe a whole new chapter of her life is about to start. With Beta Wooper calmly watching over her. <laughs> Uh. All right. Oh no! Uh, did not mean to press that. Save your progress. Yep. Yeah. Save progress. But uh, we're not yeah. gonna be playing this one. It just goes into um a oh. couple. Of... Yeah. Uh, stop! Stop! Game. God. Fucking. Close out this. <laughs> All right. For you guys who do not know, I've mentioned this on stream before, but. <clears throat> Uh, we are not going to be playing the fourth trial in the Phoenix Tried Trials and Tribulation um, series game um, on stream or on YouTube at all. It has a lot of topics that I do not personally feel comfortable with putting on the stream itself. I will make a friendlier version of what happens and tell to you guys when we go back to doing the stream in the future. But Let's make a fun little like PowerPoint. <laughs> we can make like, a fun little PowerPoint about it. Yeah, 100%. Um, it has a lot of just subjects I don't personally want to breach and talk about, and I don't think that would be a uh, healthy addition to the stream. So uh, I would advise if any of you do look it up to please make sure to um, be warned there are some serious subjects in there and some very problematic things. I'd say, to say at the very least, um, there's a lot of extreme... There's a lot of there's a lot of things we would not that are not appropriate here, um, just in general. The game actually calls it out a bit, but I personally do not feel comfortable just putting it in uh, or streaming it myself. So I am going to skip the next one, and we will be giving you a little bit of a PowerPoint. You did see Edgeworth in his fancy little suit for a second from his early days, so you do know uh, this, this is a little bit of lore in there. So we'll share that with you guys later. But we will be back with the fifth one. In the meantime. I think next week what we'll do is Katie and I will start Portal 2 co-op. Um, and we'll probably play this uh, trial offline to get it ready for whenever we come back with normal Phoenix Wright. Yeah, well, I'll have to coordinate with you because... Uh, yeah, I, th I think it's a shorter case if I'm not mistaken. So we might be able to get through it quickly. So how yeah. fast we can get to the next case all depends yeah i mean we could definitely find time to do it 100 percent. and if not i could always uh if, if you do not have the time or if i need to get through it really quickly i could just do it on my own but it's always better to have company there yeah i will not be voice acting that shit though like god damn <laughs> his voice the tiger fucking wrecked my voice <laughs> oh boy i need to start taking like when there's less female characters i should just take some male characters to be honest can you give me your best T Gray impression? Uh, let's see. Uh, the thing is, is I'm very bad with accents. Uh, so can you give me an accent to like play off of, just so I have it like in my sure, brain? Sure, sure, sure. You saying I'm a liar? You saying I'm not telling the truth? All right. 
This is going to be very bad. Apologies to the Let's people. Let's do it! <laughs> um, you saying I'm a liar? You saying I'm not telling the truth? I love it! So good. So good. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, we'll do some portal co-op and, uh, yeah, we got the let's go's in chat. Let's go. Um, uh, but yeah, no, we will definitely do, uh, some portal co-op coming up soon and all that good stuff. Anyways, guys. Yeah, I know Elijah wanted to play that. So, um, if you want to play with him too, too, like that's totally fine as well. I will find a way to get you both in on it in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> Um, maybe what we could do is let him to kill you for not playing with him. With him. <laughs> uh, you know what? Maybe we'll try to be like I, I don't know. Maybe we could switch off levels here and like yeah, one we level. Could do a switch off or like, or you could just have like a you and Elijah portal co-op, and then we can do the Ace Attorney offline or something. I don't know. I, 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 I'll plan out that. That's that, that's a tomorrow problem. It's not a today problem. Yeah. <laughs> actually, long story short, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, the good news is actually Elijah does have vacation coming up, so he should have time to actually join us on the stream if we want to do level by level, swap out with one another. But I'll have to ask him, talk to him first, so we'll see what happens. All right, yeah. who are we raiding today? We're going to raid. Yeah, I know th this is like a really early wrap up. Um... Yeah. You want to do some something else or nah? Just call it here. I think we'll call it here for now. Um, primarily because I got to start cooking a bit for today uh, and tomorrow, and I have a lot of transcribing to do for other things D and D related. No. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, sorry. Katie made a great puzzle, and I figured it out today, so now I got to transcribe it all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We are going to raid Uchu. Uchu is a very good bean. He is currently playing with Splatoon 3, uh, as most of us are, if we're being perfectly honest, right? Um, so make sure to say, oh, pff, I didn't put the right one that raid. There we go. So we're going to go say hi to him. Uh, right now, he only has follower chat on, it looks like. So make sure you give him a follow. He's a great guy. All right, guys. Uh, if you haven't already, follow the YouTube. This video will be up here on by Saturday. Tomorrow, my Mario Party sh video is coming out with uh, everyone from last Saturday. And here's a raid message. If you haven't already, join the Discord, all that good stuff. All right, guys? Thank you very much for hanging out with me. I hope you all had a fantastic day. Y'all stay safe, stay botan is cool, and I'll see you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. That was a good ending. That was a good ending. I was like,